Whenever there's an incredible value for others, a love for others, that is where people just thrive. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you guys. Today is part two with Kelly Stickle, great friend of ours that we we did we ugh, we spoke yesterday. Is what I'm trying to say. Gosh, just a bit of a tongue twister there. We spoke yesterday on the show to talk about his book called "Take Our Job Back." And uh, as I'm reading this book, it's uh, it's just been it's kind of convicting me in a great way to kind of provoke me, push me, and realize what we can do more as believers, as Christians, as uh, as people just every day, wherever you work, wherever you live. And so, if you haven't seen part one, Go online to our YouTube account on uh, the Miracle Channel on YouTube. Watch it. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. We're going to kind of unpack it a bit more today. And uh, if you didn't see it, this is a good friend of ours, Kelly Stuckel. Welcome. Well, thanks, Jeremy. It's <laughs> great to be back and, and looking forward to our conversation. And awesome. I, I love this show. I just got to say, I've been yeah. watching it and love what you guys are doing. I love that you're awesome. going live and connecting yeah, totally. with the audience. It's amazing. It's been a lot of fun. We like It's still in its humble beginnings and it's... it's uh, it's it's fun though. Like live television to me is one of my one of my greatest passions. When uh, about a year year and a half ago, um, we were talking as a family, and uh, Danielle, David's yep. wife, said, uh, "Man, we should get back to advancing the kingdoms." And as she said that, I told her, "I said I've been thinking that. I want to get live again. I want to be able to connect with the audience." And so um, that's did you kinda... know that I was on the very first advancing the <laughs> yeah, kingdom? You mentioned that. <laughs> that's crazy. For those who don't know, advancing <laughs> the kingdom was these like yeah. what like three nights of three hours yes. of live TV. So three back to back nights. Yeah, we oh, did four, four hours. hours yeah. Right, of back to back telethons, and I remember. Leon was always asking us to come out. This is years ago. Yep. Um, and I was so nervous and so scared. And he's like, just come and, and stand in the call center. And I would like almost throw up. I was so scared and so nervous. I don't know why I was so scared, but I was just like, they'd, they'd count me down in five, four, and you're in the call center. And I'm holding the mic and I'm just <laughs> yeah. shaking. I remember being so nervous. I was like, yeah. hi, I'm Jeremy in the call center. And maybe we'll have some of those clips queued up for how horrible they were in the future. But um, but yeah, those are the, the, those were the I days. remember yep. way, way back when. That was wild. And they were such long nights. <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were yeah <laughs> but it also was great you and i were just sharing stories about the call center and like uh, yeah. so we saw some incredible miracles through the phones and uh so when we were actually talking about going back to live tv that was something i was like we have to have live phones i want live phones so I people can it. call in so we can connect with them and um actually tonight is our telethon that we're doing actually yes. we, we actually have carrie pickett yeah. joining us on so exciting which yep. would be so cool and yeah uh, she actually just went through a leadership transition with with andrew Yes. Womack, do you know that? Yes. Which is wild. And so she actually responded to us in the midst of that transition and said, yeah, I'll come on and join Amazing. you guys for the show, which is incredible. So we're so excited to have her on tonight. And uh, for those of you who are watching today, make sure to tune in tonight, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. It'll be such a great time. We've got a number of people joining us here in studio. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. And we're going to hope that you call in so we can connect, pray. And then also, like I said, it's a telethon where we have so many things that the ministry is doing and we are wanting to raise funds for and dreams that God's put on my heart. And, uh, and we're going to do it. And we, we've got to do it through the funds and through the giving and donations through, through you guys. So we hope that you join us tonight, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. It'll be a great time. Amazing teachings coming from Kerry Pickett. We invited Kelly, but he said no. <laughs> he wasn't in town. He can't, he's got to get out of town tonight, so, so he can't join us. But uh, you got to carry, so yeah. come on, let's he go. He was on the first one, and now he doesn't want to come back. I don't know what happened. But, uh, yeah. but uh, I wanted to talk to you today, Kelly, about your book. We, we uh, unpacked it a bit. And there's so many things in there that um, are very provoking, as I was saying, that kind of fire me up in a good way. You, you talked about how in, in March of what, 2021? 2020, yeah. Or 2020, was uh, COVID. And that was kind of one of the moments that really spurred you on, where you mm -hmm. started to realize, like, what are we doing? Like, what, what are we letting the government shut the church down? And, and for those who are watching, like, it, this isn't about the, the COVID and sickness and this and what we didn't know in medical. It, it has actually nothing to do about that. This has to do about what is church? Is it just a gathering on Sunday or is it actually the church going out and being the church day in and day out, morning and night, at work or not, wherever you go? And, and that's what I loved because you brought a lot of clarity to that where you start, you start to kind of provoke Christians to say like, we got, well, the title of the book, Take Our Job Back. Yeah. And uh, I love that. Yeah, well, one of the things that in my study, and I, it, you know, my angst through all of COVID, and I think all of us felt mm -hmm. angst, but 
what great eight Enneagrams do uh, is we go to study. <laughs> and so yeah. I went to study and started studying the early church and was yeah. shocked to discover, and I knew some of this, but I didn't know all of it, but yeah. I was shocked to discover that the, at one time the church ran all of social services. For instance, this is one thing that I highlight in the book. Did you know that in 329, uh, Constantine, Emperor Constantine, put passed into law that is still in existence in Canada today. This, like, this, that's amazing. But this law that he passed was that all church uh, facilities would be tax exempt. And in Canada, it's the same thing. Yeah. The reason for that tax exemption is because, and this is his letter to the Senate to say, this is the law I want to pass and why, is he stated that the church was the government's social arm. Wow. And that kind of, that got my attention. I was yeah. like, wait, the, the church was, Christians were the government's social arm. They were the one taking care of all of the, all of the needs, all the poor. The, yeah. And I was like, it's true. And then, uh, and then 60 years later, his nephew, who wanted to, uh, you know, abolish Christianity again, and return Rome to the worship of the gods and all that kind of stuff, wipe out Christianity. He lamented that, that Christians had more influence than he did as emperor of the largest empire in, in the on world. the planet. In the world. Wow. And it's like the president of the United States saying, hey, the church has more, <laughs> Christians have wild. more power wow. than I do. And he limited, and the reason why is because he said they were serving people and helping people and, and they were embarrassing us because they were out giving the empire. And wow. when I read that and went, wait, what? And I thought, I thought, can you imagine? Like, here we are whining and whimpering today in 2020. Uh, we're whining and whimpering about the government shutting us down. The government has all this power and all the rest of it. And we're, we're, we've become so weak yeah. that I was like, how did we get from there to here? And that's really what the study was. And realizing that at one time, the church ran all of the social services. The church started the first hospital and ran all of the healthcare system, including, uh, I, I didn't realize this, the last church-run hospital in Alberta was shut down in 1989. Right. Really? And given it was it wasn't shut down, it was given to, given the, government. to the government. And and I thought, okay, they so the church at one time ran all the health hospitals, which is why a lot of the hospitals are named after saints and yeah. Christian names. Yeah, yeah. And we ran all of the education. Wow. And slowly but surely we've abdicated, we've given all of those responsibilities. I love that you're bringing it back to light though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it has to be communicated being like, this is the purpose of it. We're supposed to be doing these services and do these needs. And like um, something Leon would always say to us as as he would always challenge us to, to do, to be doers, not just yeah. hearers, but doers of do, the word. Absolutely. And, and so like everywhere I went with him, he was always doing that. And some of the craziest stories came from it. Like we'd be driving to the airport and all of a sudden there would be an accident right in front of us or something on Deerfoot. Yeah. And all of a sudden he'd be like, pull over, pull over. Cause I'd always often try to drive for him. Cause he would, you'd just be yeah, doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pull over. I'm like, what are we, we going to do? <laughs> and he was like, it's a chance to pray and, and hopefully help someone. Absolutely. And so we would. We'd whip across five lanes, and he, all of a sudden he'd be like, stay in the car, and he'd just start running towards the accident. And I'm like looking in my mirror. I'm like, what is he doing? But he'd go in there, and he'd start laying hands yeah. on people and praying for them and yeah. this and making sure if an ambulance was called. And he was just in it, and, and I love that. And I can think of many moments in the airport where we're all, where him and I were in Denver once, rushing yeah. to catch a plane, and, um, and he just stops and kneels down and prays with this guy, and, and I'm kind of like, Leon, well, we got to go. Like, we were rushing for the plane 10 seconds ago. Nothing changed. Like, <laughs> get up. We got to go. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm kind of nudging him along. And then finally, he just grabs, because he's kneeling down with me, he grabs my leg and looks at me and goes, like, kind of, like, be yeah. quiet in, yeah. a, in a stern way. I'm like, all right. And, uh, and sure enough, he just spent the time with him. And sure enough, we get to the plane. And, and it's, like, it's like God had made, I don't know, maybe God made the plane late. I don't know. But that we made the plane. It was yeah. delayed. And so it just kind of, like, made way for this opportunity. And, it's, uh, and so I very much, we grew up in a culture that in where we were, and, uh, and if we're not careful, and this is why I love that you're bringing it back to light. If we're not careful. We slide into the temptation of just thinking churches on Sunday. And that's why you bring it up in your book. And before I get you to answer this question, I want to throw to the trailer we have over your book. And um, it, it's, I highly encourage anybody who's watching right now to grab this book. You can go to Amazon. You can order it, order a couple of them, get them sent to your house. Um, and it's called Let's Take Our Job Back by Kelly Stickle. And also you can get on Audible. I highly recommend Audible. I always do Audible. That way I can, if I'm driving, I can just kind of download and listen and let it marinate in my heart. But let's take a look at this trailer and, and I hope it uh, fires you up to get the book. Who's to blame for the state of our world? Is it the government? Is it God's fault? People just ignorant? We're on the ground in the center of the protest over George Floyd's death. 
What if we took responsibility for what's happened to our world? What if there's a paradigm shift in the way we operate as God's church, the ecclesia that Jesus originally intended? I also want to remind anyone who's watching as well, the phone lines are still open. You can always call 1-800-815-6513. We've got people on standby ready to pray with you, to just um, talk with you if you need someone to just chat with. And we, we have so many things happening here at the Miracle Channel. And one of the things we wanted to do was to have phone lines open to connect with you. So please call the number on your screen. And like I said, I hope that that trailer fired you up to get the book. You can order it now, order it after the show. Just make sure you get the book because I promise you it's going to fire you up and it's going to hopefully make you um, reflect a bit on maybe the way you view church. And, and uh, I, I find it very interesting that you said that the church used to run all the social programs. And, and I find that intimidating, but also I find that encouraging because I'm going, that's pretty, pretty cool. So I had this thought, and this kind of drove me to the book. And, and I was like, well, we could take the job back at, at Big C Church, and where do you start? And I, mm -hmm. then I had this thought, what if every church, mm -hmm. you know, took responsibility for their own city? Yeah. Yes. Right? We don't have to change our country, just, just our own city. We've got churches in every community yep. across this country. If we just said, I'm going to take my community, which then led me to thinking, what if every Christian <laughs> just took responsibility for their workplace yep. and, and the needs there, their neighborhood, all the rest of it? Yep. Like It wouldn't be much, which is why we thought, well, let's put this out and just provoke that, that thought and totally. say, what would happen if, if we said, we're going to take responsibility for our city? Totally. Yeah, and that's exactly it. It's like often people, like God has us all where we're at at such a time as this for this year, this season, this time. And that's something I often reflect at is I'm going, we're all here for a very unique reason, a very unique purpose with a very unique set of skills in this year for a very real purpose. Like, yeah. And uh, I've had so many conversations with, with non-Christians where they're like, I just want to be used by God, but they think that means work in ministry. Right. I'm like, you're in ministry. You are. Yep. It's all around you. Go yep. out, like do it. And so many people make the mistake because they like we, we we do work for ministry and we're very blessed and love it. It's great, but um, this doesn't mean it's the call of God only. Not at right. all. It's a piece of it. And so every person, wherever you're at, you're in places that I can never get to, that Kelly can never get to. You're you're seeing people that no pastor will ever see. You are it. Like like Leon. And this is just would always say like. I'm the coach. You're the players. I'm not on the field. Yep. I'm on the side of the field. You're on. You're on the. You're on the field. The coach is usually the fattest guy on the field. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like I can't run no 40, 40 yeah, yard yeah, dash. Yeah, yeah. But it's like you're the players with the skill sets. So we're here to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. One of the fascinating things in in my study of the early church that that I came across was the greatest revival in history uh, happened in the third century, and Christianity at the turn at 200 AD, there was approximately, um, oh, well, it was like, I can't, you have to get the numbers right in my head if I remember, but it was something like 68,000 Christians within wow. thing. By the end of, uh, actually it was 280,000. By the end of the, that century, the third century, mm -hmm. year 300, there was over 6 million. And, wow. and, and the growth is exponential in that, in that century, wow. more than any other century percentage-wise. In non-social media world, world, world. non-TV world, you know what I mean? Word of mouth. That's so it. I went looking for the preacher. Yeah. Right? <laughs> who, was the, who was the preacher? I, don't know. I, I went looking for, you know, who was the yeah. bishop? Who was the preacher? Who was the evangelist? Who was the Billy Graham of the year? Like, who was, who was yeah. the minister? Wow. I went looking. Thought. And there wasn't one. Yeah. In fact, of all the centuries in, in history, the least amount of bishops or, or saints or, or you know, famous yeah. leaders that we know, that century has the least amount. And yet the wild. greatest growth happened. So I was like, well, what happened? Well, in 249, uh, a plague struck uh, Rome uh, and all of the Roman Empire. Yeah. And it wiped out, uh, it lasted 20 years, and it wiped out a fifth of the entire Roman Empire. Years. And at one point, 5,000 Romans were dying a day just in the city of Rome. Uh, and so it was, it was terrible. And, and this plague, and I'm reading this in the middle of COVID, right? <laughs> we got all this stuff going on. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. And the world, if somebody got a cough or somebody was, was not feeling well, the world would throw, they, they'd be so afraid, they would throw relatives out into the street and, and say, because they're so afraid yeah. of getting the disease. Yeah. The Christians, the saints, took them all in. 
cared for the sick, nurtured the sick. <coughs> and in that caring for the sick, this is what's, what, what I found fascinating, is that many of them died themselves. And, wow. and because of the hope of the Christians, more pe people converted to Christianity in that century because they saw, you've got hope, I don't. Mm -hmm. And they wanted that hope. And I was like, it wasn't a preacher. It was, it was everyday saints doing the work of the ministry. Wow. And, and yet, on top of that, Roman, the Roman emperor saw uh, this, uh, you know, people converting to Christianity at such a rate that yeah. they turned and said, it's the Christian's fault that we have this plague. And they started the three most successive yeah. persecutions, uh, the worst ones uh, in all of history, yeah. in, at the end of the third century, killing more Christians than ever. And so people, Christians were dying by the plague, and Christians were dying by persecution and yet still had the greatest growth That's in incredible. all of history. And it wasn't a preacher. Well, and the thing that I think in the Western world of Christianity that I at least need to be reminded of, and I feel like the Christian world also needs to be reminded of, is if God's call is on you, like that, I, I, maybe I'll say it this way. I'll put it in my, my experience, is I want to be bold enough and courageous enough to do the call of God when God's calling me to do it. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is when you look at, the deaths that the disciples, how they died, yeah. it's vicious, vicious. vicious. Yep. And you're going, how? We're, they're doing God's work. Yep. 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 Like man will oppose you, and yep. it's not necessarily going to be comfortable. Yeah, but what about the promises of God and the favor of God? Yep, those are also yours too. Like you can also walk in these, but also it, there's no, like the, the Bible says that like they're, they're, they will oppose you, and they, they will not accept you. And if they don't accept you, you leave and you continue on. And, and so I almost, there, there's a reminder to me because I, I did a message, I did a message two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and uh, at the end of my message, I stopped and I, I was deliberating whether or not I should say what I was about to say, <laughs> and I stopped and I just went, ah, oh, I have to say this, and it was heavy on my heart, and I just, at the end of the message, I, I said, you know, to the whole congregation, I said, and I was holding the Bible, and I said, a lot, there's a number of things in this book that are illegal in this country already, yep. that I can't preach on right now, and if I preach on it right now, I could be arrested. I could be uh, fined or et cetera, et cetera. And I said, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just hope that when I need to take a stand for that, that I'm courageous enough to do it and willing to take the consequences that come with it. Yep. Um, because when you look at this through the light of, of they were doing God's work, as you just said, yep. they were heal, helping and helping heal the sick and take them in and take the pain and people were dying, their own people were dying and helping people. And then the whole Roman Empire turns on them and starts to persecute them. So our, and this is why I'm pointing this out, is our reaction as the Western world would go, well, then God couldn't be on it. How come, uh, how, how come, <laughs> so how come they weren't, if, why didn't God protect them then? No, God was still totally there with them. Like yeah. there's an evil force that's going to try to oppose everything we do. And we're still called and we still got to do the work. And so I, 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 we're talking today about um, Kelly's book, Let's Take Our Job Back. And it's an incredible book. I, I really want to encourage you guys to download it, to get it on Amazon, get it sent over to you. Um, if, if you have questions about it, call this number on your screen, 1-800-815-6513. We want to talk with you. We want to pray with you. And I hope that this is provoking you a bit where you go like, what? How, how are we supposed to do that? And I love Kelly's thought where he talks about like, if each person just owns their workplace, owns their home, owns their city, and the, the, the churches just start to kind of influence in the circles that they're in, like, I, I've often joked about how Michael Jackson had it right. Look at the man in the mirror, right? Yeah. It's like, if we all do that, we're going to make some incredible headway for the kingdom so of God. So we, we took that challenge as a, our I church. don't recommend Michael Jackson for our kingdom direction, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, we took that challenge as a church and yeah. said, we're going to take responsibility for, cool. for our city. Yeah. And just, just some of the testimonies that have happened just in, in Lethbridge, yeah. our, our uh, first locations in, in Lethbridge, that's where I preach out of. And we just said, we're going to take responsibility for our city. And we've had the provincial government come to us and saying, you're doing a better job of feeding the, the homeless on, than man. we are. Here's $100,000 to do it. Wow. We had the mayor of the city sit down with us in January, sit down with me and say, would you please ask us for money because you're doing more in this city than oh anybody gosh, else. Really? And we want to wow. help you all, uh, do this. And, and so all of a sudden when, and we've got, you know, we partner with 189 different agencies within the community that, that are helping, we're working with and helping the homeless. We're in the middle of purchasing uh, six acres of property right now in order to, to 
affect the most um, difficult problem in Lethbridge, which is homelessness. And we're going to build four apartment complexes and 20 townhouses Come and all this on. kind of stuff on there wow. to be able to do That's that. Incredible. But then, but then because of that, all of a sudden these people are saying, hey, we just stepped out and going, well, how, how do you, how do you afford that? What we don't, we, I don't know. We just stepped out. <laughs> I don't we, know. Just, we just stepped just out, and it. all of a sudden, all these people come along, and we've yeah. got a number of churches that all of a sudden rallied around that, yeah. and began and began to, you know, to do that. We had one small group of believers. Another story in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Yeah. Small group of believers, uh, just saying, "What difference could I make?" That's a lot of people ask. What difference could I make? Yeah. We had one small group of wow. of believers, a group of 10, 15, 20 people, mm -hmm. and they've been active just. Handing out clothes is basically all they've done yeah. for the last six months. And they just won the um, uh, not-for-profit of the year for the city. Come on. Because, the, wow. because a group of Christians said, hey, could we do that here? Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Because you mentioned that before that we started uh, on the show, you were talking about Isaiah 58. Yes. And that one, that was so interesting to me because you, you brought all these verses that I've read so many times into a new light that I'm going, it feels fresh, brand new, never saw this perspective. Mm. And it's interesting how the word can be that way where yeah, all of I a sudden you yep. see it with a new lens. And uh, what you pointed out was that when they went and I, I'm, I hope I'm not mixing this up, but they were talking about, they essentially God was calling them out. They were saying, um, Remind me. So I, I, so I tied Isaiah 58 to, to Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Yes. And the reason I did that is because when I found out that Isaiah 58 wasn't written by the prophet Isaiah, yes. it was written by the school of prophets. Yes. And it was actually That's written was. in the time, it was actually written in the time where the, where Babylon was conquered by the Persians, which is, which is, uh, and the prophets were, you know, writing this prophetically yep. about yep. the return of Jerusalem and, and these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it, Isaiah 58 starts out and it says... Hey, you know, tell the people of all their sins, which yeah. is a wonderful thing you want to hear as a pastor yeah. or a prophet. Hey, God's speaking <laughs> to you. Tell the all. Worst, it'd eh? be the worst. Nobody would want to hear you <laughs> preach. Oh, yeah. well, hey, everyone, I'm here to just lay it all out. Here we go. And I'm expecting, okay, well, oh, here it comes, yeah. right? Um, yes. You've yes. worshiped idols. You haven't put me first. There's sexual immorality among you. There's. Yes. I'm waiting for, the, you've abandoned the commandments. You're, you've abandoned the law of Moses. I'm waiting for all the typical list of sins. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 2 in Isaiah 58 says, uh, you worship me daily, you seek me, you seek my face, you're keeping my ordinances, yeah. you're, you're acting righteously and loving justice. And I'm like, and? Yeah. And then verse 3 is like, and the people said, so why aren't we getting our prayers answered? Yeah. And, he, and why are we fasting and you're not hearing? Yeah. And he goes, well, I'll tell you why. Because you're fasting for your own desires, for your own answers, for your bless me club. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. Yeah. And he says, and yet you've neglected. You're not taking care of your workers. Yeah. You're, you're not taking care of your own family. And you've got needs around you that you're not meeting. Yeah. And I was like, that's the sin? Wow. Right? Yeah. And he says, if you do these things, uh, if you help feed the hungry, uh, clothe the naked. And I, I went, wait, that's what Jesus said in yeah. Matthew 25. Yeah. He, and he says, if you do these things, it's interesting parallel. If you do these things, my light will shine on you. My, uh, my glory will actually be your rear guard, which I was like, oftentimes we're pursuing the glory yeah, of God. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, the glory of God will be pursuing you. Yeah. And I went, whoa. And, and then it says, you'll be known as rebuilders of cities and restorer of homes. Yeah. And I went, that's what we're supposed to be known for. Yeah. And that was what uh, Nehemiah was known for, and which I believe that that was the time. That's incredible. Like, and and that's what you're seeing, hey? That's what you're seeing with what your church is doing and the ministries that you guys are pushing forward. Like the fact that you're building, well, on a, purchasing six acres to build property to help the homeless. Like that's yeah. incredible. Because that's something that my mind immediately began to wrestle with was like, am I doing enough? What can I do? Like, what can I physically do? And, uh, and we're only, there's only three minutes left, which is crazy. It feels like we just started. But yeah. um, I guess I want to encourage anyone if, uh, or I want to ask you, what can people at home do with their world or their church or their ministries that they're a part of? What, what would you say to them if they were wondering, okay, Kelly, what do I do? Well, I, I, you don't have to look very far to find a need yeah. or find someone so, in need yeah. or to find or to know somebody uh, in your family that has a need. And let's do more than just pray. Yeah. James said this. Uh, you know, in there, he says, hey, if someone has a need and they're asking for, don't just say, oh, I'm going to pray about that. If you have it within your own ability to give them a coat, if you have it with your own ability to, to meet their needs. So we don't have to look very far to meet needs. And if each one of us individually yeah. just said, hey, I'm, 
gonna, I see a need and I'm going to meet that need. Yeah. And I see a need at work and I'm gonna help that person. Yeah. I, I see a need in my neighborhood, I'm gonna take over a meal. I'm gonna yeah. go encourage them. If we just, each one of us did that, mm -hmm. we're taking our job back. I love that. Um, you pointed something out in Isaiah 58, or in your book where you talked about, do not ignore the needs of your family members. Yeah. That's interesting. That's in the New Living Translation, is it? Isaiah 58. It okay. says, and don't ignore yeah. the persistent family members. I'm like, oh, no, you get personal. <laughs> I know. That's, but, that, but, but it almost, that's what I mean, though, is it, it's yep. kind of provoking. It is. Where, yeah. where you're going, oh, I'll go witness someone else instead. Yeah. It's <laughs> you so know what I mean? True. You're kind of like, my family's messy. Yeah? Yeah. You're like, everyone's family's messy. So like, why? But it's interesting how it's almost saying, it's just saying, take care of your own home. Yeah. Like, there's so many teachers I, I listen to that are not just pastors, but people who are just brilliant people. Um, Jordan Peterson talks about it all the time where he says like take care of your bedroom yep. clean, clean your room yep. and he literally means clean your room like yep. actually clean your room start there because if you just start taking care of your own home your own world your own family your own kids your own wife your own in-laws your etc cetera, etc cetera, if you start to own it and now you apply the biblical teaching to that that's what isaiah 50 is saying it's saying just yep. own it take yeah, it back it says family it yeah. says your workers yeah and then it says your community and the yeah. needs around you that's right so it, so if we just did that yeah then it says your prayers will be answered. That's <laughs> Come on. Okay. We only have a minute left. So I want to encourage you to grab this book. I also really quickly want to read off a few prayer requests that have just come in. Um, this one is from Tyla. She's got a request that she's called in about her dad. We're going to pray for this. This one's anonymous, so it doesn't have a name. Uh, but prayer for Michaela, who needs healing. Uh, this one's from Corinne. She called asking for prayer for healing as well and to find a job. And for Becky. Um, I want to encourage anybody else. Becky's requesting prayer for her siblings that they become Christians. And so I want to encourage anybody else who's calling that they, they would, you would bring in your prayer request. The phone lines will be open a few minutes after the show, so make sure you call 1-800-815-6513. I'm going to do a five-second prayer. Lord, we pray for everyone who's called in today that you give them provision, guidance, help, health, and healing into the future of what you've called them to do, Lord God. We praise you, we love you, and we thank you for this show. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure, Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thrive is only made possible by the generous donations of people like you. 100% of your donation goes towards ministry efforts. Call today and make a significant impact in the lives of Canadians. Through your financial investment, you are a missionary to the world. Phone lines will remain open for a limited time. Connect with us now by calling 1-800-815-6513 or visit miraclechannel.ca slash Thrive to leave your comments, prayer requests, and praise reports. Together, let's thrive.